so easy. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Um, pictures of military 
uh, vehicles or soldiers standing in front of um, institutions. Um, and I think it's just uh, the way uh, the media chooses to, to uh, kind of, in a very sensational way, uh, portray just that element of, um, of what's been going on. Uh, and the most striking thing is that nothing really happened. Uh, I mean, Paris, of course, um, I, I was there too during Paris photo, uh, which is terrible. Um, but then the way it flows over to, to Brussels and, and how the uh, government dealt with it, um, and how the media then chose to uh, report on that, was indeed uh, quite extreme. But do, do, do you think, I, I was of course thinking about the way it's, uh, the media is constructing the narrative around it. But also mm -hmm. I do wonder, and I'm, I'm not an expert in, in politics, or so, um, this is a kind of probably quite naive observation, I do have a feel that uh, clearly there's uh, political choices to create a narrative around what has happened in Paris and what kind of results will have in uh, society at large. So is, uh, um, the, the media play a part but surely there's a decision made by the Belgian government in shutting down an entire city that obey to a certain kind of narrative. And, and you know, I understand that fiction is an unrespectful way to think about it, but create a kind of idea of what, you know, what the situation is. I'm sure that there are objectively reasons why um, the city needs to be shut down, but um, the kind of state of terror maybe um, is uh, functional to someone. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, it's it's. Uh, I mean, also if you if you hear the way um, François Hollande, uh, Prime Minister of uh, of France, uh, the way he responds um, about how they will retaliate and the military action that they will take, it sounds very much um, like um, what what uh, President Bush was saying after the 9/11 attacks, and it's kind of scary how. Uh, how Europe is, is becoming uh, the same in that way. And I, 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 Belgium is a different place. I mean, it's always, especially politically, been a very strange uh, landscape. But to see how uh, our prime minister also follows up in, in, into that uh, terrorist, so-called, uh, yeah, everybody's scared in the city and, and, and putting a military there, it's, it's, um, it's kind of worrying how, um, how they chose to respond to it. But they, of course, have their reasons to do so, and I think the media, with everything that's happened, uh, just, yeah, just uh, kind of jumps on that. Um, but, yeah, I think that's, that's a good example of, of where, as you said, uh, that, that something is, in a way, fictionalized. But at the same time, uh, something like fear or what all the people feel because of those um, soldiers with machine guns walking in the streets uh, is very real. Uh, so, you know, there's a narrative created about something that happens which doesn't really exist, maybe. Uh, but, but what comes out of that, in turn, um, does become very real. Uh, so in that sense, um, you know, that the line is not always so so clear, and of course it's a manipulation at the end of the day. Um, and I think that's that's what's interesting about everything that's happening. But do you feel that your work, um, because of course I'm thinking that in reference of the way that you uh, manipulate reality uh, through your photographs and the documents that compose your projects, um, where you create a kind of fictional narrative um, that Larry, the, at least the, the, the way that people read it, uh, challenge the way that we read one thing as one or the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it, I think it's it's um, it, it depends on how you you, you look at it, really, because um, it doesn't mean that because you, you 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 stage something or you take a picture of something that doesn't. Uh, it doesn't happen naturally in, in reality, or if you if you choose to manipulate something, that doesn't mean that it's not real in a sense. I think we have to think more about um, uh, how we can tell uh, truths rather than uh, speaking about the construction behind them, because it's always a construction at the end of the day, and it's what what 
it's I think what's important is how um, which methods we use to tell these truths, um, and it doesn't matter if it's uh, literally you know really happening in front of the lens or something constructed constructed because the truth uh, doesn't really find itself directly in any of the two anyway. Um, mm. But in, in a way, you could you could say that the uh, Belgian government has forced a fiction to the population, a fiction that could have been true, or maybe yeah. it is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for, for those who don't know um, uh, Mark's work, I mean, the, the latest book is um, where they sing like raindrops will leave me thirsty. It's a, uh, you're going to correct me, um, it's an exploration of the idea of love, and the starting point of that was um, um, this uh, love commentos in India, um, where um, people that are, uh, would, uh, want to be in a relationship but for religion and uh, uh, things related to um, uh, society structure, they are unable to be, they, are then they ask their help for these commandos, they are abducted from their family and they are kept um, safe. And then there's a renegotiation with the family and the environment to be brought back to society as a married couple as opposed to be uh, two lovers that secretly and um, love each other. That was the starting point of a kind of exploration of broadly speaking the idea of love. Um, and that is a kind of mix of a kind of construct. Well, I don't know, maybe you should take it from here. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, indeed. So it starts with a very um, kind of straightforward documentary subject, which is uh, this organization that takes in these couples. Um, and that's, that's quite simple. I mean, it's, the, the, the pictures of those uh, couples hiding in this secret shelter are also very straightforward. It just shows these, um, these people on the image, but then in sequences. Um, but then around that, uh, I created um, different images which, which are not as straightforward, which don't just depict the subject matter in the picture. Um, and that's where it becomes interesting, like, uh, for example, references to um, Indian cinema uh, on which uh, a great deal of the idea of, of, of romance is based. Um, or um, things that I constructed which reference to other problematics, for example, the, uh, the honor killings which, which come out of, uh, of these couples that, that decide to run away together. Um, and all these images that, that are, are situated around that documentary core um, are also, in a sense, speaking about truth just indirectly. And I think that is definitely as, uh, as powerful or as communicative as, uh, as the documentary element in the work. Uh, and, and where those two come together and how they communicate is um, is really what it's what, what I'm looking for. Uh, how you can switch between different modes of, of uh, representation, really. Um, I'm gonna ask. So Alex just released a book uh, called uh, Blue. Um, that's here. And full, full title is Blind Land and Experimental Unit. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, can I just call it Blue? Yep. <laughs> it's time to write the title like his um, his book. Um, and do um, you want to introduce, in a, in a way, uh, your, your practice quite, um, um, has a lot in common with uh, Max's uh, practice, even though possibly using the same methodology, the aim is different. But. Yeah, um, Blue uses um, a 1980s UFO conspiracy theory um, as, it, as its starting point. Um, it was uh, in December of 1982, U.S. military servicemen witnessed, allegedly witnessed, a uh, UFO land in a forest in Suffolk. The forest is called uh, Rendlesham Forest. And the incident is commonly known as the Rendlesham Forest Incident. And it's probably the most famous um, alleged landing of a UFO in this country, often called Britain's Roswell. Um, and yeah, the, this book uses that as its point of departure um, and it tends to sort of speak to the various theories that have um, sort of amassed and snowballed since. I mean, there's a, there's a whole community of, of conspiracy theorists that still believe and still perpetuate um, 
this myth and still are trying to add to the conversation um, and kind of um, whenever whenever they have a kind of new idea they present it as new evidence um, and so this book comprised of mainly my own original imagery yet yeah, intends to speak to um, those ideas and that and the, and the imagery that these people use um, and how how they believe in it and how if they um, can kind of have believed it for so long that they that they don't even know where it kind of began, where the idea began. Um, and this is my reinterpretation of the original events and, and um, yeah, their kind of belief and the images and aesthetics that they hold on to. I mean, uh, there seems to be um, uh, something interesting about uh, both of your practice, that in a way you both want to explore and document something that is impossible to document, which is, on one hand, simplifying love, on the other hand, is the kind of exciting expectations and fears related to the idea that somebody else is out there and here to threaten them or save us, whatever they might be. You know, there's a kind of semi-religious desires uh, that possess people when they talk about UFO or... Um, uh, does that resonate true? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I very, my, myself, want to believe that there is extraterrestrial life out there. Uh, the kind of pragmatist in me says that there isn't because there isn't enough kind of hard evidence to support that claim. But then it's, it's, it's a question of what, what is evidence and how it's um, molded and, and, and um, formed to become what you want it to become. And the presentation of that evidence. Um, it's interesting talking about the working, work, our working relationship to the, the what, what the me media is um, perpetuating with the terrorist attacks, um, because they, you know, they are obviously putting a spin, a spin on things in order to to kind of uh, control control the, the general public in a certain way. Hmm. <laughs> Do, do you, uh, Max, do you feel that um, there was, uh, or, or there is in your, in your work, because if I, for example, Lotus was a, as a book that explored this kind of blurry line between um, exploitation, documentary, um, um, it's a kind of layering of, of different um, uh, photographic material and documents that question itself the relationship that you had with the subject matter, which were uh, Lady Boys. Um, where are they? In Thailand. Oh. Thailand, yeah. yeah. Thailand. yeah. Um, and so, do, do you feel that the impulse uh, on your part, for example, with the, uh, the latest book, it was the, the desire to explore the idea of love or what love is in, in, in a. Clearly, you can't be tangible about it. How do you photographically document that? Well, yeah, I think that's. that's um also, in between the different works, you can see how um, the subject matter becomes more and more abstract. Like, for, in, for example, in Lotus, in the first book with the um, uh, transgenders in Thailand, uh, it's a very clearly identifiable subject in the images. Um, but then, in the fourth wall and in the, in the latest book, um, the actual subject matter becomes something without form, something abstract, an idea. Um, and that's, that, that, um, that's where the, the, the need to construct something comes into play, because it's not something you can really just uh, come across uh, while you're walking on the street or, or visually see. So you have to kind of create it, uh, visualize it somehow. I feel that, um, uh, I'm sure this is kind of I'm banalizing, and, uh, but you, you, you could have uh, depicted the idea of love traditionally photographically is, for example, photographing couples and I mean, asking them a couple, you know, questions about mm -hmm. what is love. Um, yeah. I know that this is a kind, of, a kind of simpler version of it, but if, if I think it seems to me that you then move in a different realm because actually that kind of exploration is quite as unsuccessful. <coughs> or not as satisfying, because partly I think you want the viewer to project their own expectation about love. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, um, and especially because of the, uh, also because of the extreme um, uh, 
contrast between the uh, Western ideals and the Indian ones, um, and the fact that I'm a, a Western photographer that goes there and then uh, works around that subject matter, um, that when I bring that work back to the West, um, you know, the, the readers project, they look at the images from, from their own ideological standpoint. Uh, and and um, when you show the work to, to an Indian person, it's something completely different. Uh, and it remains open in that way, in a way that everything kind of always seems to fit somehow. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, for, for my own kind of... Uh, I, in terms of the subject matter itself, I, I rarely try to make some kind of statement uh, if, it's, if it's right or wrong, because it's never that clear cut or if it's true or false. Like, for example, I, I find um, Alex's uh, subject very interesting because it's uh, it's always the question, you know, like, do you believe in it or not? Uh, are there really aliens out there or not? You know, are you a conspiracy theorist or not? But that's actually next to the point, really. Um, it doesn't matter if you believe in it or not. It's about um, what it means. Uh, to believe. And, and, huh? What it means to yeah, believe. Yeah, or, or, or how you choose to, um, to tell a story. Uh, and and it's, about, it's about that narrative and what that, what that means and not about... It's, it's, how to, it's, how to do, it's, it's to do with how to interpret that as, as your own, as your own individual story based on your kind of prior knowledge. It's, it's non-prescriptive. It's, it's open mm -hmm. to the point where it's... It's, it wants you to kind of choose the images that resonate with you almost and build your own yeah. picture, fill, fill the kind of gaps that the images leave and uh, impart your own kind of belief, as it were. Do you, yeah, do you feel... Could. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Well, um, I was just thinking about uh, another thing that seems uh, in common between the approaches uh, of both of you is that there is a sense of empathy in the photographic material. I don't know, but I, uh, I'm not Indian, and I'm not somebody that believes in UFO, so I'm, I'm maybe I'm totally wrong about this. But I feel that both Indian people or um, <coughs> uh, UFO believers will find the book um, um, not only, it w they wouldn't find the book offensive. No. Do, do you see it? Because <laughs> I, I think, for example, if I think about the Aphromauts, Christina de Mido's book, I think there was the, and still an ongoing conversation about this, about how other, for example, in this case, um, um, African people find that material, or uh, some of them find the material um, um, insulting. Um, just for those who doesn't know, um, this book was published in 2011, 12 maybe, um, and uh, um, it was an incredibly successful book, it's called The Afronauts, and Christina de Mido started the starting point with this um, uh, program, space program uh, that actually existed in the 60s in Zambia. Zambia. Um, um, they wanted to go to uh, the moon, um, so there was kind of a, a race with the Russian and the um, Americans. Um, and the starting point was for her something that existed, you know, like in your case. Um, and then there is the narrative. But some people find the way that she delivered that narrative um, insulting, diminishing. For um, and I'm not quite sure where I see. I'm not quite sure where I position myself, and I'm not sure that's you know, if it's really relevant. But I do feel that uh, both your work doesn't have that. that there isn't a sense of you taking the piece out of both how love is interpreted and lived in India, or uh, those believers of the UFO landing in Sussex. Suffolk. Suffolk. <laughs> um, no, the, it's it. I don't. I didn't want to go down. I didn't want to poke fun at anyone, and I don't think that's important either. I don't think that's a function of the work, and nor should it have been, because it's as much as it's easy to ridicule, because it is, and that's what the national press continues to do. This story is still perpetuated. It's. It's not. It doesn't contribute to the conversation in a kind of interesting way. It's. It's. This is my own thoughts. That yeah. There are bits which kind of do poke and prod and, and maybe make fun of, but it's, you know, I still, as much as I think it's ridiculous, I still want to believe it. Um, I, I, I mean, Max, I, I don't know how you feel about 
love UFO. in India or UFOs or <laughs> what do you feel about UFO? Do you oh. believe them? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you feel about this um, relationship with the subject matter? Because I just thought about it when you were talking about um, Indian people who look at the material and have a different interpretation to it. What is that reading of it? Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, um, it's very interesting because of course they see it with, uh, with their own uh, you know, cultural references, their own background, their own um, interpretation as everybody does. Uh, but a, a very nice example is uh, I was being interviewed by an Indian journalist about the Listing Like Raindrops uh, book. And uh, the opening page of the book is a sculpture which uh, is a sculpture which I made together with a with a friend on location, and the, there are four ice blocks stacked on top of each other. Um, and we made that with our own intention, um, our own ideas, um, which we which we've never stated anywhere. Uh, but the uh, Indian journalist asked me, um, "Oh yeah." The four ice blocks, um, is that because there are four main castes in India that are kind of on a hierarchy uh, position that may be falling apart? Um, and I was like, wow, uh, you know, that wasn't the intention, but it's fantastic uh, reading of that image and, and suddenly it functions in a completely different way. Um, and, and sometimes those things happen, and, and coincidences uh, happen, which which give which when the work kind of starts to speak back to you uh, and teaches you different things about how how um, people look or uh, look at images or interpret them from from uh, from the place itself, maybe. And those things, I mean, I think for me that when when those things happen, that's where that's where I get the most joy out of it. Um, and I think by, by, by approaching a subject matter in a very open way, um, in a very non-judgmental way, that, um, that it's possible. Mm. Because uh, the, um, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, Niagara. Niagara? Mm -hmm. Niagara. 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 Uh -huh. um, the Alex Salk book. Um, they also explore the idea of love. Um, in uh, uh, a series of portraits of uh, couples or people that will go there for their honeymoon and then collecting uh, material, not too dissimilarly from what you do, but there were more structure narrative in, in that in that book, um, and I wonder what's the relationship between the, the practice of you two and that generations of um, I mean that book and. Alex Sof, um, our practice is clearly strongly influential in the way that we think about documentary photography today. Do you see any legacy and relationship with that kind of work, or um, do you see a relationship with other kind of um, documentary work? Uh, yeah, that, I mean, that work definitely resonates with me and is definitely a reason for, for a part, kind of a small reason for why I'm kind of doing, making the work I'm making now, but it's it feels very his work feels very s static to me and it's it's it feels it feels linear in the way it's supposed to be read not that not that it is strictly linear but it's it's uh, i feel t t it's it's um it feels a little bit more prescriptive um uh, just in approach and I, I i feel with my book, for example, it was the intention was for there to be a, a kind of anti-narrative while still trying to tell a story. Um, it's uh, for, with with my book, I feel like it's not always clear where how you even meant to kind of where it begin because it's the cover is kind of the same back and front. Um, mm -hmm. I it's I'm not trying to be disparaging about Alex's work because it's, no, no, we are talking about the relationship yeah. with that type of approach of documentary. Yeah, I mean, Max, it, it, it's interesting. I did uh, it did. Um, uh, surprised me that you're joining Magnum, uh, which is a news of a uh, couple of weeks ago. Um, mm -hmm. It did surprise me just because I couldn't, knowing your practice, I couldn't quite make sense within the realm of the Magnum that I know, which knowledge, I must say, is quite limited probably and dated, so I'm not really sure what has happened probably in the last five years there in terms of who. But um, I can see, you know, if I think about um, a kind of lineage of different approaches to uh, documentary photography, 
Um, you know, I do, and, and, and uh, you, hopefully you're going to help me understand in this. I do see, you know, you can see the more kind of traditional, and then the new generation with uh, Alex Sov um, that joined in the 90s, or you know, possibly even later than the 90s. And I guess you, I don't, I'm not quite sure how that lineage work and how, why you decided that that was the place uh, to welcome your, uh, uh, your work. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I, to be honest, I don't know, know myself yet. Um, you know that you're a man. How? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, no, but uh, I don't know how it's gonna, you know, how it's gonna evolve or how it's gonna work. It's it's something very new for me too, and um, for me, uh, what 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 was the um, the the deciding. Um, factor in, in why I should um, apply or why I should be there is because when when you look at um, documentary photography or, or you know maybe it's also for a large part photojournalism but uh, that Magnum or the audience that Magnum has or, or, or um, how, how big their influence is that when you are or in, like in my case um, when I'm when I'm working on how that medium, you know, what you can do with it, where, 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 where the line, and the line, is the line is, and, 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 and how far you can go, and where it's better, and things that are used, and, then it's such a place, because that's where the medium kind of gets defined for, for, for a very large part of the, of the masses, I guess. They're, they're very influential, as you said before. And yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting both that you applied and that they accepted. Because mm -hmm. clearly, for uh, are you applying, it means that you think, as you explained, there is a place where um, um, it's important for you to be. And it's, it is quite interesting that they thought that your practice could add to their roster and their idea of documentary. Because clearly, having you there means something about the way a majority, mm -hmm. not, surely it's not the, the totality of that, but the majority of the other members uh, are thinking about documentary photography today. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a very good sign. I'm, I'm extremely flattered by it as well, and um, I hope uh, my work only gets more and more radical because of it. Um, and, yeah, it, it's, it's also kind of difficult uh, in a way for me because I've, I've never really um, thought of strictly sticking to the uh, medium of photography and you know, maybe... Or the definition maybe. of documentary. That's the other yeah. aspect of it, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we'll see where it goes and uh, it's going to be an interesting two years. Um, who knows what happens in two years. Maybe I might build a boat or something. Uh, Sounds good. <laughs> uh, but do, do, you, do you ever think about um, your practice sitting within a specific realm, like documentary or... Um, because I, I think, you know, um, of course nobody wants to think, or maybe they do want to think about it in, in a specific way. I mean, my work is specifically engaged with being out in the world and using photography as a means to, to explore the landscape, the landscape in which I already know, I think. That is what I kind of honed it down to, as to what I think I'm interested in. Um, I, in, so in, that respect, in, in that respect, you could define what I do as being yeah, a landscape photographer, um, a photographer of the landscape. Um, but I mean, I, one of the reasons that we're here is to talk about storytelling, and I think I consider myself to be a storyteller, even, even um, yeah. yeah. I forgot, there's actually a chapter in the book called Safari Be a Storyteller. Yeah. Well done, Paul. Um, <laughs> give me this asset for uh, publicizing the book. So, um, the, we have done our half an hour, so I will, there's a nice audience that Max you can't see. Yeah, can I do it? I guess, can I turn the computer? <laughs> Here they are. <laughs> do you know anybody? <laughs> Uh, no. Anybody want to meet? <laughs> um, it's like a chat roulette. <laughs> Somebody's going to start stripping. Um, 
Um, so it would be nice if um, some of you have kind of any consideration or questions or um, you have Gary, please. <laughs> Come on, Gary. Well, I, I can make a comment. Yeah. Um, so you brought up with at least Max going to Magnum, and I think Magnum made the shift a while ago from photojournalist to like when they brought Martin Parr in and they did more documentary slash art slash humor kind of world. So I think this is kind of like the next step. I think that if Magnum didn't do that, they'd be dead because photojournalism relied heavily on magazines and newspapers and that market is severely hurt, I think. Um, so going into the art market in that region, I think gave them some life. And I think moving, I think um, BK, which is a friend of Max's, was like another start. Um, going a different route, going somewhere new and young and engaging with uh, like Michael Brown with uh, Instagram, he's got a huge following. And I think uh, these kind of new output outlets is, is what's going to keep them alive. So having Max there to me it seems like a very smart and easy choice. But you're talking about commerce though. We were well, talking about language. I mean, uh, but I, I can see. I, I can't see you separating that. I think that they're one and the same. I mean, if you don't have people buying and interested in the product, then it will go away. Mm. It's just the way it is. I mean, that's, that's so yeah. you you are the artist, and we have an Instagram guy. What else do they get? Um, well, they have video. I mean, they, they they've been trying to branch out to do multimedia. I mean, uh, Mikhail won the Deutsche Bourse Award this last time, and his uh, exposition, exhibition was very different than normal. It was backlit and very colorful and different. And I think that we need to push in these directions. And I think bringing in new young blood and uh, new ideas is the way to do it. You can't just keep recycling the same old stuff. Yeah, it's interesting because in a way that's about co uh, commerce and the format, but um, I think the definition of what is documentary is also quite challenged by, at least I know Ma uh, Max's practice, I don't know the other people, um, because in a way Martin Pass, you know, he used humor and color, but still a documentary photographer in the traditional sense. But his stuff's more safe. Uh, Max's is a bit more dangerous, and it reminded me when you were talking about, um, you know, fictionalizing or creating a setup situation, it reminded me of a movie that I saw last year called Timbuktu, which is about what's going on now, about uh, a city being taken over by um, uh, Islamic extremists. And someone said, why did you make a fictional film about this? And he said, uh, the director said, I could tell more through fiction than I could through fact, through documentary. And I think if Max were to use people that were actually young kids that actually did this kind of thing and got in trouble for it, they might be dead. So it would actually cause them harm, whereas if it's Created fictionally, you can tell the same story, you can tell the information without causing harm. You just tell more because it's not quote unquote true. Max, do you have any response to this? Um, yeah, thank, thank you, Gary, for your feedback. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I follow you in, in, um, in the kind of uh, fictional approach um, to a subject matter, but it really doesn't come from. Uh, um, potentially harming people or um, kind of uh, becoming becoming a factor in, in a certain problematic. Um, I just think that, that that's that's maybe what photography or documentary photography has done all this time because there's been some kind of uh, um, very strong holding on to trying to show what's real and that's why the photographers always had to actually photograph uh, things that really happened. Um, but I don't think that that's the way uh, a story necessarily needs to be told. So isn't, it, isn't, it, isn't it satisfying when you know that event did actually occur? It's still, people still crave that notion that that did occur with, uh, without being made under kind of manufactured circumstances. There's still people still kind of desire that. It's funny, I was yeah. talking to my father before this talk about an image in the, in the self-published Be Happy books, 
And he's, there's, I think there's an image, I haven't seen it, but there's an image of someone throwing up whilst a whale is jumping over a boat or something. I don't know. Does that, does that sound very true? true. And he <laughs> You read it, it's in the book. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to see it? A whale and somebody vomited. Yeah, that boy. In the boat. <laughs> Um, and he he had questioned its legitimacy, and he, he him thinking that it wasn't um, a, a kind of true or real image, in, an, a, an event that actually occurred. It, there was a kind of sense of disappointment in his voice, and it's. There's also a dead woman uh, holding a baby. Which is a dead is what? Dead woman holding a baby. In the book. In the book. Buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, but yeah, maybe yeah, there yeah, are different yeah. functions for those two things. Yeah, definitely, but it's still it, it's this idea that one is is preferred over over the, the other. There's still there's still a kind of hierarchy. Yeah, but isn't that? Don't you think that that's very disappointing, Alex? Um, I mean, does it really matter if that guy cutes while the whale was jumping over him, or is it more exciting to hear the story? I'm happy. Very happy to have you tell me this story. I don't really care if it's true or not. It's about it's about that image that I now have in my mind of the guy puking while I'm <laughs> No, I, I, I no. to some extent I agree with you, but there is still a kind of a little voice in the back of my head that says that would be better if that actually happened, uh, if I had witnessed that and seen it and captured it. Especially if uh, news news stories. I guess. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. We should, we should uh, remember that last year there was this big controversy at the WordPress photo um, competition where somebody was uh, excluded uh, in, I don't know if it was a winner, I don't, I don't really follow uh, uh, closely this, but uh, I don't know if it was a winner or a finalist, but one of the photos seemed to be constructed. Actually, it was in Belgium, wasn't it? Yeah, it was in Belgium. <laughs> What happened in there? No, Nobody cared about Belgium for like centuries. <laughs> um, we remember. Um, no, I love Belgium. I, I was just joking. And I, I can't wait to be back in Brussels. Um, but um, there was a photograph of people having sex in a car, and but it's kind of uh, um, there was a kind of light. What was the thing? There was a light, so it seemed to be set up and. Um, help me because I can't quite remember. But uh, I don't. I don't know. But anyway, the whole point of this is that it was a story about uh, a place, and one of the photograph was challenged because it clearly visually looked like it was constructed, and then the story was excluded from the prize. So there is clearly, and, and I know that the WordPress photo just issue a, a, a set of requirement for pictures to be entered. So if one way we have Marx joining Magnum, on the other hand, I think we have a specific field that really try to be guarded about the reproduction of reality. So to me, it makes sense. Yeah, but I think you have to draw a very um, clear line between uh, photojournalism and documentary. I mean, you know, uh, photographers working for, 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 uh, for the news to really um, instantly be able to uh, visualize an event that's happening around the world is something very different to, to, to uh, for example, the way Alex and I work, um, where we just, you know, pick a subject um, and, and spend a year working on a book. Um, and then and then telling that story. Uh, I think I think um, it should be not uh, kind of compared to each other. Of course, there are overlaps, but um, you know I think it's important to respect uh, the, the the job and the responsibility that a photojournalist has uh, in relationship to some kind of direct portrayal of um, an event. Um, compared to the documentary uh, approach, which has, in a sense, a lot more um, uh, freedom to play with, uh, to, to, to use different approaches and to kind of question um, those very strategies, whereas a photojournalist really just, you know, needs to, needs to show the people what's happening. Um, and that's, yeah, I think it's a different thing. Uh, yeah, I, I challenge that, actually. Um, it's challenging. I, I challenge it for a bunch of reasons. Because um, in photojournalists, I've seen, um, like, wider shots. The photojournalist is still a human. He still has his objective. And he still points the camera to what he wants to be in frame. So let's not even say that he manipulated the image after he shot it, or she shot it. But um, in Brussels, they only showed certain photos from in the press to show a story they wanted to tell. 
um, in, in Iraq when America invaded or liberated. Um, they definitely pointed the camera at certain places to show like the Saddam statue being pulled down and all the photojournalists point the same way. I mean, it's, it's, it's all manufactured there too. It's just more of a lie saying, no, this is objective. Yeah, of course, Gary, but that's the function of the, um, the, uh, the, the way the, uh, the photo editors of the newspapers work, and that influences the way the photographers think they should work so that they can have a picture on the front cover of the newspaper. Uh, but that doesn't mean that that's not their job. Um, so, of course, it's all manipulation, and you can say that for photography uh, as a medium, essentially, but um, as Alex said before, there is still uh, somehow a kind of um, uh, more uh, credibility when you know that what's happened in the picture is real. Um, and I think uh, even though something is, um, like you said, the pulling down of the Saddam uh, statue, was, which was just a, a stunt for the media, um, it still happened, you know, and we still have an image of, of that statue falling down even though it was a staged event, which everybody does know afterwards too. So maybe that's the fault of the um, of the people who, who make the choice of which images that they're supposed to. I mean, the, the context of the image is a fundamental part of the reading. So you see Yeah, it. and, and I also, what I also find very disturbing, for example, when you see um, footage on television or on newspapers which have built, been, been filmed by so-called amateurs, uh, people with uh, mobile phones that um, you know, film, film something as it's actually taking place, that uh, the very first thing they say is that, oh, this footage has not been uh, verified for its credibility. Whereas that should actually be stated for uh, a photographer, which is much more experienced in uh, manipulation of an image. Mm -hmm. um, any questions? See. I just wanted to say that for me it's like a little bit the same topic, but it's interesting that uh, you were chosen by uh, Bloomberg and Channeling like to be in a show for like so opposite to the thing that Magnum does. Like, I would say so, like, let's take the project that they went uh, like on the wall area to photograph something and they didn't like do any photograph because they are so opposed to it. Because of what we are talking about, that we can totally manipulate the pictures that those photographers are taking. So somehow for me it's just like interesting that on the one hand you are in Magnum, on the other hand you are in a well, we should we should cl clarify. Uh, Max uh, oh, did this yeah. as a student uh, working on a video that was commissioned to him, so it wasn't with a piece by you know by him. Um, but I think I, I can't hear. I can't hear the. the so um, um, uh, she was saying that um, he, uh, she, she found it interesting that uh, on one hand you are in Magnum, on the other hand you've been working with Broomer and Channering that challenge the very notion of the idea of documenting uh, or the veridicity of uh, the act of documenting. So she was trying to say... And I'm just saying that it's interesting. And it's it's she's, not like she's, uh, that I'm saying it's something... She still like you, but she's <laughs> saying that uh, she just wants to be relaxed and she just wants to make sense of us. And maybe you can tell her. told me that I should apply for the, because they have that, like every year you can apply for the program and I'm, I'm not doing, I, I would never be thinking about joining such an agency with what, what I do because I'm mixing like documentary with creation and he told me that he finds it interesting and for me it was also like I wouldn't never expect that such agencies would like go in such direction. Did you hear? No, I she, 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 did, uh, she worked similarly to you and, and Alex, but she was asked to apply uh, for, I'm not sure, a uh, salary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, what was the, I know, the, the relationship between 
being in the show. But I explained that with uh, Bloomberg Summary, you are yeah. actually showing your own work. But it doesn't matter because I think what, what I do in some kind of uh, essentially comes close to what uh, Bloomberg and Chandler also do, or at least their vision on um, documentary or, or photojournalism. Um, and I don't see why or, or how Magnum uh, cannot be a part of that. Um, I mean, if you see, for example, uh, Alex Soth or, as you said earlier, Martin Parr, it, it, it's then more about questioning what the function of Magnum as an agency is. And I don't think it's, it's, it's um, com comparable to, to press agencies such as AP, uh, for example, uh, that it's much more just about um, yeah, being 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 part of, of something where you can um, have a very big audience for your work. Uh, I don't think it's very much about uh, this tra traditional idea or, or, or the way they've, I guess, uh, being portrayed uh, for the past, I don't know how many years. Um, so yeah, I don't see how that should conflict. I think um, if you're working in the photographic medium, um, and, and, and telling stories about some kind of uh, truth or something that, that exists in reality, then why shouldn't it be able to, uh, to be part of, of, of that context? Any more questions? Yeah. Um, to both Max and Alex, both of your work seems very sort of tailored to the book form. Mm -hmm. I mean, the pictures themselves, like on their own, they're really beautiful and interesting, but they seem to rely on the sequence and all the other images together as one to create the work as a whole. So I was wondering, how much weight do you put on an exhibition and how do you approach it? Do you approach it as a sort of magnifying glass to individual pictures within the book or do you see it as like creating a different story? Uh, you do not hear. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard, but uh, I'd like to hear how it's an answer. I, uh, the, for me, for this work, Blue, the, the book is the work and the, uh, the exhibition is, is, a, is a chance to kind of unpack and, and re reinterpret uh, some some kind of newer thoughts I've had about the work since um, since getting it printed and bound, which is a very kind of final act which can't be changed, whereas uh, exhibiting and having another exhibition that's an opportunity to, to for your ideas to evolve. Um, and so I with with the exhibition format I um, I really seriously think about the images from the book that I don't want to appear and the ones that I do. The, um, the book is, is, is quite not er erratic in its, in its placement of images. It's, it's concise and considered, but it's, it, it resists gr groupings and typologies. And um, with a, a recent exhibition um, I had at Weber, um, I, I really thought about the images um, that weren't in the book and that there are example, individual examples of the kind of uh, original groupings they came from. So with the exhibition, I, I tried to bring some of these multiples back in um, in, order, in order to kind of create a, a kind of different, differing meaning um, and perhaps approach it from the, um, a kind of a, a character's uh, mindset. I think it's you. It's my turn. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think. Uh, agree. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I, I will think in a similar way as Alex. It's always um, well for me. Uh, the book, the book that's the end result and the final way that the work should be read. And then when it comes to an exhibition, um, it's always uh, it's 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 impossible to translate a book into a space. So uh, also because every space is different um, and. Um, then it's always the work gets gets um, given shape according to what the space is and doesn't try to 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 uh, portray the same narrative as you get in the book. So so the, the strategy that I often tend to use is to to try and show the book itself in the space um, in one way or another. <clears throat> often that people can pick it up or, or read through it as as they look at the. Um, the objects in the space. Um, that's also the reason why I worked with light boxes. This, this is the man. There's a light box coming in. This, this is the man that made me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> he, he has a solo exhibition opening downstairs in, in one hour. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, mean, I mean, we should say that both of you um, are really prolific bookmakers. I mean, um, both with your books and your case with other people's work. Um, and, and so there seems to be a kind of strong relationship between your practice and the book form. Um, <laughs> Max, I wanted to ask you: Do you do you always foresee your work as as being <laughs> as um, as being as ending up in the in, in the book? Is it is it always something that's considered beforehand, or and, and do you foresee um, making book, more books in the future? Is that kind of how you enjoy working, or or, or is that not a, a necessarily a function of your practice? No, absolutely. It's always a book. Um, even when the when the when the uh, all the material is collected and the images are made, it's it's already uh, for the form of book. And I I I think it must be actually very difficult to make a photo series that that would be tailored to space. Um, I mean, you you have a, a good example is Wolfram Tillman's Neuer Welt. Um, I saw the exhibition in Agla, I think it was two editions back or so. Um, he made a fantastic catalog with Tash, and, uh, which he also designed, typography, he did everything himself. But the space was an exact uh, copy of uh, the original exhibition. Uh, everything was exactly made the same way that it, that it should be for that work. And I can imagine that that's incredibly difficult, because you don't always have that um, Possibility, and especially when you're working with with a narrative, um, you know, and and you have to make an exhibition in in a, in a, in a ten, 10 square meter space. How how do you do it? Um, so I think in that sense, it's it's always just uh, the most effective to work in the form of a book, and, and not only because of the practical issue, but just. Um, because of the sequencing, because of the fact that you can't see everything in one uh, view as, as you would, for example, walk into a space and be able to see all the images at once, whereas in a book you have to uh, flip through the pages. Um, but, but for example, with Dilma it's interesting because a lot of the uh, recent work is, and always has been about scale. And of course the book, you can play with scale, but within the limits of the size of the book. Yeah. So if you think if you think about some of this um, you know recent digital work, which really excited me the first time I've seen it, the way they presented the scale of it, and you know you, you might not be able to play uh, uh, equally as a um, as a sequence, but you mm -hmm. can do. And there are people like Jeff War, you know, the, yeah. the back kind of generation that when you yeah. see you think singularly as an image, an impact that an image can have, then the yeah. space. Um, yeah, yeah, but that's that's more of um, singular images, I guess, rather than sequences. Yeah, but I, I, is it? Don't you think there might be a, a danger of of kind of stifling the work or, or kind of choking it in a way if if the book is immediately what you resort to as a photographer as being where the images will end up? Is is that being the work for you? Don't you think that that kind of restricts you in a way into making a certain type of work? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but then, uh, for example, in my most uh, in my latest work, I've been to uh, Kenya to work on the Mau Mau uh, in uh, England. Everybody should know uh, what that is, I guess. Um, and there, it was very um, decisively uh, a difference between which work should be for the book and which work should be for an installation purpose. And that's when you start using video, when you start thinking in a sculptural way. Uh, whereas the narrative or the context of the work um, can be found in the book and then uh, the spatial work just doesn't uh, feature in the book so that there is a very clear uh, difference between them and that they each have their own function as well uh, and that they don't really try to, to infiltrate in each other's uh, space. Okay, should we take the last question? There was one here. Yeah, I just wanted to ask Alex to say a bit more about, you mentioned considering yourself a landscape photographer and a storyteller, so how those two things come together and perhaps how this practice has evolved to do that, to get to this point, I believe. Um, I, I've always resisted just 
of going out into the landscape and taking photographs for the sake of taking photographs in a kind of serendipitous manner. It's always had to be for some kind of reason. I've always been trying to explore some kind of thing, whether it's just an idea in my head or, or, or a story like a UFO landing. Um, it's, I, it's sort of tethered to, to mythology and how different interpretations of place um, and are kind of revealed and the ones that remain and, 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 and are most sort of relevant or prevalent. Um, but it's, I wouldn't exclusively call myself a landscape photographer, I'm not restricting myself to that, it's just what I happen to be doing. But it's, it's yeah, it's definitely trying to um, approach an area I know with, with, a, with a, a, a slant, with a, with a tape, with a, a, a pre-existing idea of a story and then trying to reinterpret it and re-engage with it but, um, through images. Does that answer your question sort of? I don't know. Okay, if there are not any more questions, and there's one down. Yeah, um, just to what you said earlier about um, how the narrative changes if you show your image in a book, or if you So um, the question was, uh, was it for Max, for both of them, or? Uh, yeah, for Max. Uh, Max. So the question was, you talked about the relationship of your images in the narrative and sequence in the book form, and then being different one for the space. And um, um, the question was, how are they different, and how they function differently? Well. Um what I, what I found that works quite well for now is to have the, um, the... Because when you take images out of the narrative, out of the book, and you put them in the space, they kind of lose their context and their meaning, and they become just some kind of uh, pretty uh, fetishistic uh, objects that could mean anything, unless you know uh, what the story is about, which you can only really find out in the book. So the um, the images I often choose to show in, in a light box format or in print are the images um, that, um, that 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 um, make that aspect stronger. That they could that they're the images that are the easiest to interpret in many different ways um, and kind of function as a as an open introduction to to what you would then later discover in the book um, and then. With, with the knowledge of, of the story, uh, you could look back at those uh, images and, and then realize uh, how they're, they're intended to be. Thank you. Okay, so I want to thank uh, Max and Alex for being here today, the Photographer's Gallery for hosting, um, Oliver and Joanna for organizing this, and uh, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, 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 yeah, we definitely should. Yeah. 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 How are you doing, Gary? You alright? Good to see you. Nice to see you. Gary's one from Marcel. Hey. We're from nice Germany. Um, How did you find that? That was fun. Yeah, it was good, wasn't it? It's nice to have Max Skype over. Yeah, I like Max. It's cool. Nice to challenge him. Yeah. Can you give the plug from Max?